lot of people considering a trip to the Philippines wonder what it's like to wake up on a floating, off-grid, over-the-water eco-hut in a private lagoon off Corona Island. Well, it's pretty much like this. Welcome to Pauline Houseboats. This uninhabited jewel is popular for ecotourism, world-class diving, and seeing World War II shipwrecks. It's also a favorite spot among Filipinos themselves, so you know it's good. We took a full-day guided tour with two members of the island's ancestral tribe, the Tagbanua. There's no better way to experience the incredible lakes, beaches, reefs, and forests. So if you're planning to visit yourself, this is the episode for you. We are leaving Manila after an incredible day devouring their Chinatown, oldest one in the world, and the Mall of Asia, the biggest one in Asia. And now we're heading off on a crazy adventure, going to a secluded lagoon in Quran, where nobody inhabits it except for these houseboats that we're gonna be staying on. And it's gonna be one of the most exclusive experiences in the Philippines. Our transfer to the airport is from the hotel, the Conrad Manila, and it is a phenomenal hotel. If you are coming to Manila, I definitely give it a big thumbs up. Uh, go ahead from the Lockwoods. If you want to see a tour of our room and more from the hotel, then check out our previous two episodes. You can click that right up there to put it in your queue so you can watch it next. So now we've got about a 20 minute drive to the airport for an hour and five minute flight on PAL Express. PAL, P-A-L, Philippine Airlines. It's a non-stop straight flight from Manila to Busuanga, which is gonna be different from our other flights on this trip, where Manila serves as a hub for all of the airports, basically. So we're gonna be going to and from Manila when we're island hopping from here on out. All right, let's let this adventure begin. So there's high security everywhere in Manila, especially at the airport. So we had to go through security to get into the airport, and I imagine we have to go through again to get the flight. But everybody is so friendly. They, everybody, everybody we pass by says hello and calls us ma'am and sir and really nice people here. It's showtime. If there's one thing I like better than turboprop aircraft, it's reliable takeoff time. So much different experience on this particular flight so far than on the one we took from Singapore to Manila on the way out here. But luckily we booked all of our flights for this entire trip through Inspirato, our travel company. So if we have any issues along the way, they take care of it for us. We can work directly through them really helps with language barriers and financial barriers and all that other stuff. If you want to learn more about that program, you can go to followabc.com slash pass. We meet some friends on the flight, Mike and Jess. They're actually going to the same houseboat, house, houseboat system, right? Yes. I don't even know what to call it. It's an ecosystem where these houseboats are. And we're going to see them in two days, but they're traveling on their honeymoon. They're big travel enthusiasts like we are, and they're on a month-long trip, so they have us beat in days. <laughs> <laughs> Just got to wait for our checked luggage now. There is an environmental tax that we have to pay before we leave the airport, and I think it's just a couple bucks per person, like a dollar fifty, a hundred pesos, Filipino pesos per person. It's actually two hundred per adult. So now we have transportation service from the airport. So that took about forty minutes, but we had other passengers that they stopped to let out on the way, and now we're at the water. I'm guessing we're taking a boat. The boat ride's about ten to fifteen minutes. This is definitely the most off the beaten path we've we've done so far. What am I looking at right now? That was like clear, crystal clear. You can see everything. Pretty darn close to it. This is gorgeous. Hello. Phil. Look what they found. It's a dog. A dog. <laughs> so cute. All the way to the Philippines for a dog. What's his name? Zero. Zero. He's one of those dogs that fight a lot. I love it. We just arrived. Um, the restaurant serves as sort of the hub and the center of the whole system they have here with the other houseboats. I am seriously so happy right now. This is mind blowing. Uh, the journey here, definitely worth it and it's just the tip of the iceberg as far as what we're gonna be doing while we're here. 
This is a huge coconut. Our lunch is going to be probably a mixture of Filipino and Italian because the owner of this place is Italian. But it is so gorgeous here. We've been to Belize, we've been to amazing places in Mexico, we've been to Costa Rica, we've been to the Virgin Islands. But this is on a whole other level. If you've seen that movie, The Beach, with Leonardo DiCaprio, that moment they make it through the green and they see the beach for the first time, that's what this feels like. Not only is it beautiful water, which you can see almost anywhere out of all the places that we've been, but the way these rocks just jut out of the water and all of the, the, the vertical growth to all of these plants and trees, it's like so many different cool geological formations all in one. This is gonna be a great three days. To order uh, ahead of time for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, our entire stay. So we're gonna look through this menu. So we can get your order from breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay. Now that we're ordered, we're gonna go check out our houseboat. We're gonna have our lunch there. I think our ride is here. Bye! Bye. 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 What did you order? Ceviche. That's ceviche? Oh my gosh. And it looks like it's cooked in milk, like a coconut? Coconut milk? Yes, coconut yes, milk? Yeah. We can't have a hot, humid video without me, the person that is only stupid and keeps continuing to pour water on her head even though she always regrets it. Don't do that. That's uh, our drinking water. See? Uh, stupid. <laughs> she's not stupid, she's hilarious but it was a waste of fresh water. This is our fresh drinking water that we have here. They replenish it daily. Cole in Brooklyn got some pasta with bacon in it, like a carbonara with no sauce. And I got lumpia, which I learned about on our last adventure into Chinatown in Manila. And Phil and I are also gonna share some salmon sashimi. And of course, you saw that he has the ceviche. Mm. That's really good. And I'm pretty sure it's handmade too. Good food so far. You have the option with every meal here of either eating at your hut or going back and eating in the restaurant. So we're gonna do a bit of a mix, just depending on how social we feel. All right, I'm gonna go change into swim trunks because I just plan on living in swim trunks for the next three days. The kids can't wait to explore, so Colt is taking off in the kayak, Brooklyn on the paddleboard. I would tell him to watch out for poisonous snakes, spiders, and all that, but he loves those things. Colt is in hog heaven here. He's just got the kayak out, and he's just going all over the shore here looking for crabs. He's finding some really amazing stuff, actually, but he's just such a loner, so happy. Just throw him out in nature, and he will entertain himself for days. So now we're back at the restaurant. We're gonna have some dinner and get a game plan going for the rest of the stay here. Hi. One cool side effect of ordering all of your meals in advance is we just show up here when the boat picks us up, sit down, and they bring us our food. Everything we ordered, and we didn't have to talk to anybody. We should mention that this restaurant is exclusive for overnight guests only. And I got the squid ink pasta. I am a sucker for squid ink pasta. That's really good. So if you want to book this, we can put a link to their website in the description, and you can book directly from their website. Well, we're going to make our way back to our houseboat and see what it's like to try to go to bed at a place like this. That's delicious, but we're heading back to the hut. Woke up this morning about 5 o'clock to a pretty big thunderstorm, lots of lightning. And within a couple of minutes here, they're supposed to bring our breakfast to our hut. And then we've got a really big day out on the water. The rain has let up. It's just a small sprinkle at this point, which is no big deal since we're probably going to get wet all day anyway. Uh, but got to get a little food in our bellies and then hit the road. Best mango I've ever had. Whoa! Wow! What in the what? world? So it looks like our boat's on the way. We're going to do a private tour because we're going to beat the crowds and. Uh, we're supposed to start a little earlier than now, so we're running a little behind, but hopefully we're still going to uh, beat the tourism that comes in uh, because nobody's inhabited here except for us in this little system of houseboats and the restaurant. Um, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> She's sneaky, that one. <laughs>
This is the boat we're taking on our full day tour today. Jeffrey is our guide and he's paddling in this area where the houseboats are because it's a no wake zone. But once we get further out, then we're gonna use the motor. And we have this speedboat all to ourselves. It's a private tour. I love waking up to a new place the next day because you see things that you didn't see when you first arrived. Um, it was much darker then, and the way the light hits the water, it's a totally different experience now. Our first stop is Kayanang Lake, and uh, the boat ride over was the easy part in terms of getting there. Oh, I love that this is a butt workout. It's like a hundred and something steps to get up there. How many steps, Jeffrey? 167 up and then 200 up. 167 steps to get up. Woo! The harder you work, the more it's gonna be worth it. So this is a cave and it creates a little waterfall. When there's a downpour, water trickles down in here. No coral in this lake. It's basically limestone under the water. But we are told there's a cave right over here that you can dive into. There's a mixture of fresh water and salt water and rumor has it, it's pretty warm. I'm jumping in. Well, it's not hot, but it's nice. <laughs> if we were here at an hour or two from now, this place would probably be crawling with other people. This is probably by far one of the best benefits of uh, staying where we're staying, so that we can get early access and late access to places like this. We got a tip that there's a cave over here. We're gonna check it out. <laughs> this is kind of a girl's trip. It's just Griffin and I. We're a little explorer. The world. This reminds me of the cenotes in Mexico. The water is the same color, <laughs> surrounded by rock and trees. Can I point out real quick those vests? You're rocking it, baby. Now we're off to Barracuda. All right, it's a four minute boat ride over to Barracuda Lake now, and we timed this really well because you can see all the boats starting to show up now. There was basically nothing here when we pulled in. And now, good 10 or 12 boats here. A lot of other tourists going up the hill as we were coming down. And now Barracuda might be a little busy already. We see a lot of boats and some people. Uh, they're protected areas, so there are entrance fees that go straight toward our um, payment for the tour. So we don't have to exchange any money while we're here, but every entrance has a, a fee associated with it to protect their environment here. And also, everywhere we go, very ecologically friendly. And we'll explain more about how the houseboat and that system works. Wow. This is Barracuda Lake. And it's gorgeous. The water is so clear. To see like your body so clearly under the water, it's incredible. These are all limestone rocks that are making this formation here. And it's also making a formation under the water, too. And again, this body of water is a mixture of salt water and fresh water. <laughs> Off to Coral Gardens now. It's an eight minute boat ride. It's so warm compared to our lagoon. Uh, certainly some people here already, but not terribly crowded. It's purely salt water and our instructions are do not go in the shallow area and do not step on the coral. That coral thing is pretty much always a rule. Never touch coral. Ever. Just in case you don't know, because of the oils on our human oily skin, uh, you, it ruins the coral, it kills the coral. So we want to keep our coral alive, it keeps our ocean alive, which keeps our earth alive. So protect that coral. That's what I tell the kids. Look with your eyes, not your hands. We have been to Costa Rica, we've been to Belize, we've been to a private island in Belize, we've been to the Zumas, some really incredible places, but I would say that this is by far the coolest coral system that we've seen. Some of the bright turquoise uh, clams in there, like, Look at the clam opening and closing. it just was so alive. It was really cool. And now we have an eight minute boat ride over to Bibian Beach. Gonna hang out in the sand for a little while. Colt's excited about it. He's been looking for land because he thinks he's gonna find some monitors there. Now, if I find a baby monitor, one like this, this long, 
can I catch it because it's not going to break skin? I'm going to play it by ear. Uh, we're pretty big on safety, so it's one step at a time. We're going to see how it goes each step of the way. Okay? Vivian Beach right here. Our own little private island for a minute. Hi. What are you going to do on this private beach? Nothing. <laughs> Just hang out and relax. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi. Definitely having the tour and the private guide is the way to go. We wouldn't know that this existed if not for the houseboat system we're staying in and the private guide. Oh my god, I just stepped in the water. It's so warm. It's amazing. This is gorgeous. God, this view. This is incredible. I don't think this is the beach that Colt's really imagining because it's really shallow sand area and he's probably not going to find any monitors. There's a sea snail in there, and he's tickling my hand right now. Oh my god. There we go. It was adorable. Low key. This is absolutely my favorite part of the day so far. Probably the favorite part of the Philippines so far. There are definitely no crowds, even though we're here in the middle of the day. It's just like, like Aaron said, it is a private beach, and you've got a little bit of everything. The water is warm, it's gorgeous, the color is fantastic. The beach itself is beautiful and the rock formations that are right here in front of you, like you don't even have to walk to them and they are so unique and so Asian and just so gorgeous. I could stand here for hours. Uh, I think, you know, everybody's got their own taste, but if you're coming to Coron and you want to find a place to go, this would be at the top of my list of recommendations. Typically at the end of each trip, I do something called a gratitude movement. I encourage the rest of the family to do it too. It's where I just, I stand, I look at the view and I soak it all in and I, I just sit and really focus on gratitude for where I am at that moment, where we are in this world, and I want to do that now. I'm not going to wait till the end of the trip. This sand is really neat. It's actually kind of like mud. Ooh, or quicksand, I don't know. Really, really neat feeling on your fingers. We're all getting hungry. It's about lunchtime, so unfortunately, we're gonna leave this semi-private island we have right now. Five minutes back, heading straight to the restaurant. And once again, our food has already been ordered, so all we have to do is pull up, sit down, and wait to chow. Pull up, sit down, and wait to chow. I love this day, like how the weather turned out for us. Uh, when we woke up, it was raining still, and it was like a downpour while we were sleeping. Uh, but this is pretty perfect weather. Couldn't have asked for anything better. And the water temperature is yes. And we're here at lunch. Another amazing spread here. This is crab in coconut milk and some rice to go with it, veggies, all fresh. And what'd you get, babe? You got um, shrimp tempura? Prawn tempura. That looks incredible, too. Back on the boat for the second part of our tour, but Felix is our new captain. Yeah, I'm new captain for afternoon tour. Right. Benjamin hurt his leg a little bit, but we're excited to Benjamin. see Felix. What's his name? <laughs> Jeffrey. Jeffrey. <laughs> yeah. Jeffrey hurt his foot a little bit, uh, so we're excited to tour with Felix now. <laughs> I'm the worst. <laughs> All right, our first stop this afternoon is a Tuayan Secret Garden. It's supposed to be one of the best places in Caron to snorkel and see some amazing coral. So let's dive in. This one is more like in the middle of the water. It's not up against a rock formation like the last one was. What do I think of the water? Crystal clear. This water is crystal clear. And what a swim! Woo! It's so far how long this coral goes for. It is gorgeous from right here all the way down there. We swim the whole thing and back. Loved every minute of it. Next is a shipwreck! It is a World War II Japanese. Is it an airplane or a ship? Uh, Japanese. 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 So it's, it's a wreck and we're gonna go dive down and see it. Welcome to Skeleton Wreck. 
This is just one of 12 sunken wartime ships in the bay. Uh, these are all the result of an attack on the Imperial Japanese Navy by U.S. Navy aircraft during World War II. That ship ran aground about 75, 80 years ago, covered in barnacles. And after that great beach experience this morning, we're heading to another one. This one is Banal Beach. It's another private beach. We're the only ones here. It's a monkey! It's a monkey! Bacchus monkeys. Brooklyn, what do you like about this beach? Sand and the monkeys. Ooh. Okay, so first I offered him a sand dollar. I placed it on a rock down there after showing it to him. Mm -hmm. And then he came down, grabbed the sand dollar, took it back up, and now he's storing it somewhere. And now I placed like a pink and white seashell. I'm waiting for him to come down. He's eyeballing it right now. He's looking straight at it. As easy as it would be to spend the rest of the day here, we've got a couple more places that we want to hit yet. And the next stop is going to be Smith Coral Gardens. And if you are here because you like to snorkel, you're gonna like this place too. I think Brooklyn's gonna sit this one out because she's a little worn out. But the rest of us, That was a really cool reef. Definitely lots of really cool sea life down there. And big enough that you could do that for an entire hour just in that one location. So that's one of my favorite snorkeling spots of the day. Smith Coral Garden. And now we're heading to our last place for today, which is Smith Beach. So third and final beach. It's a great place to watch the sunset. The amount of time that we have left, I don't know if we're gonna stick around long enough to see a sunset, but just a great place to chill, relax, unwind, and maybe swim a little bit, play in the sand. Oh. This is my dream spot. So this is a long day doing the full tour, but you don't have to do it all in one day. You can break it up with the morning tour and the afternoon tour. I might recommend that because we are exhausted. I mean, we've done hours and hours of snorkeling and then hours of beach time and swimming and we're really getting the most out of it. This is our houseboat and it's called the Bamboo Houseboat. It's actually a series of four different suites. So we have one fourth. Every room takes up one corner. So the rooms are essentially identical. Our closest neighbors are just across the way here in what's called the mini houseboat. And these are double rooms and I believe there are two in there that are pretty identical. Next up are the two glass houseboats which lie just across the lagoon from where we're staying. They're called glass houseboats because they have these really big floor to ceiling glass panels for walls that face the water or the rocks. Glass Houseboat 1 can be rented either one half or the entire thing, and Glass Houseboat 2 is the entire houseboat. For some of these houseboats, you can pick between the rocky side or the lagoon side for your views. And we ended up with the rocky side, which frankly I think is better because the lagoon in here is beautiful, but it's also just water. And when you're seeing the rocks, you've got Jurassic and Triassic geology right in front of you. But in addition to that, you've got a really good view of the coral reef that's right at the base of the mountain. So that's what we wake up to, and I think it's way prettier. So along with our stay, we got two kayaks, one stand-up paddleboard, and this glass bottom boat. That's an additional charge, and they asked us how many hours we want it, so we're taking out for two hours today. Let us show you a tour inside of our houseboat. Now, please excuse the mess. We've had a hard time staying as organized as we normally are, but as you can see, we've got three different bed setups. Phil and I have been sleeping here because we're closest to the door. We got those great views. And then Colt's been on this back bed and Brooklyn has been on that top bunk. And we've been using the bottom part of the bunk as a suitcase staging area because they do have these drawers that we could unpack if we wanted to, but we just, oh, I found our face sunblock. I was wondering where that was. But this little system here is pretty key. This is our communication center, uh, walkie talkies. It goes straight to the, the restaurant, which is like the main function, the front desk, if you will. And then also if the walkie talkie for some reason isn't working, you have the phone and you can dial in there. This is the safe. It's probably just big enough to put your passports in, keep them dry, keep them safe. 
uh, first aid kit just in case. But we do feel pretty protected out here. Um, there are employees uh, all over the place, really, at the entrance. And uh, I, they sleep overnight here, so we're watched over, well taken care of. There's actually a ton of places to plug in and charge up for a houseboat that is completely off-grid and solar-powered. Uh, that you don't need a converter because this can do uh, European wattage and uh, US. We can connect really with anything. Did you just say wattage? Did, Did I? Wattage? What do you call it? <laughs> so this is our little charging center. We're taking turns because uh, we just don't want to clutter up um, with no. everybody charging at once. You'll notice that there are a ton of fans. We've got ceiling fans and these two and over there. It keeps us cool at night. There is an AC, but since you have to use the generator for it, it's an additional charge, and we haven't needed that. Once we close the doors and the windows, the fans are all we need at night to keep us cool. Now, I'm gonna show you the other half, which is the bathroom, and it's a lot more space than I anticipated. Down these steps, we have a shower, and we actually got hot water. We got really hot water. We had to turn it down quite a bit. Um, and then this is a marine toilet. It's not our favorite. This isn't the Ritz, but it is well worth it to visit this area. If you're not familiar with a marine toilet, you cannot flush any products in there, including toilet paper. So you have to throw your toilet paper away in the trash can next to it. And what you do here, you do your business, and then you turn on this water to fill it up. Fill it up about halfway, and then you pump to get it to flush. There you go. Again, not our favorite, but it's totally doable and again, worth it to be here. Two sinks has been great for our family of four staying here. We've had plenty of space in the bathroom. Um, each of us has a little center to have our toothbrush and toiletries and all that. That's pretty much it for this place, but we're staying someplace else tonight. We'll show you that one. We're actually heading out to go over to the original houseboat over in the other lagoon. Paolo, the owner, was nice enough to give us an upgrade for our final night. So now we're just waiting for a boat to come over and pick us up with all of our things and take us over there. Thanks, Paolo. Thank you. Thank you. Awan. <laughs> Goodbye, Lac Nissan Lagoon. And we're going to Awan Awan Lagoon. That's the new one. <laughs> Way. We get an entire lagoon to ourselves. So this is the only other houseboat in their entire portfolio, and all of these then make up the only accommodations on the entire island of Coron. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Cole says there's a restaurant in the house, yeah. and I just heard them say that we have a private chef. What? I thought the other coral reef in Lagoon was awesome, and it is, but this is huge. I mean, look at this. I cannot wait to go snorkeling. And awesome. Wait, I call A whole restaurant on this houseboat. And look, here's a powder room. <laughs> what? This is the bedroom. <laughs> so Phil and I are sleeping here for sure. And uh, yeah, Colt was pointing out that there are nets here and stuff, like uh, little hammocks, trampolines. And there are more rooms up here. Colt says that's his room, no problem. Here's another private room. So Brooklyn can have her own room. This is the only real privacy we're having on this big trip to Southeast Asia. We're for the most part all sharing a room. And now there's another private room. So maybe we can all sleep at least on the same level. Yeah, there's a private bathroom mm -hmm. back here. Shower, awesome. A hair dryer if you need it, but I don't need it. I'm air drying. And we can even go up another level to the roof. Wow, yes. This is pretty spectacular and I'm feeling a lot of gratitude. It's almost like we're inside of a, an old volcano because it's almost like a perfect circle or at least it looks like it from where we're standing right now. And the incredible geology right here. I, I mean, I thought it was fun to wake up in the morning and just jump straight into the the coral reef in the other lagoon. But this one's gonna be like crazy comparatively. It's huge. And if we wanna go out kayaking or stand up paddle boarding, we don't even have to leave our own lagoon. And look, we have a little arch cave over there to get through. And you can see all of the solar panels up here. So this is another solar powered boat, uh, ecologically friendly, just like the other houseboats 
in the other lagoon. Yes, there's no actual electricity to this island. Everything is solar. There's no running water or water source for the island. So they actually bring that in on boats from a, a spring on another island. And all of the waste is carried away. So it's super green. And there's actually another room downstairs. So wow, you can really fit a lot of people here. You can do a family reunion, big group event, corporate event, and always be changing corporate events. Well, and this might be the best spot right here. Just this deck overlooking the water. So this place was actually built to be Paolo's home. And Paolo is the Italian guy who owns all of this and who spends his time, shares it between Italy and here. He has a sailboat over in the other lagoon right now that he sails back and forth between here and Italy. And these days they actually rent it out, obviously, for larger parties. And that's why you have an entire restaurant here, because moving a larger party of people back and forth between, say, the other restaurant could become quite a hassle with all these little boats. So here, nobody even has to leave. You can play music, you can make a lot of noise because you're the only ones here, so it doesn't matter. And I mean, this would just be an incredible trip for a really big group. It's going to be an incredible trip for our little group. And Colt has wasted no time getting out on the water. If there's one thing I love in a house or in a bar or in a restaurant or even in a hotel or a resort, it is big shaded covered patios. And this one is not only big, it's completely ours. You even have your own bar. But with just one night here, we're not gonna waste any time. We are going to get in this water and play and take full advantage of this amazing opportunity. This area is a national reserve, it's a marine reserve, it's a UNESCO biosphere reserve, and it's the ancestral land of the Togbanua tribe. Pulling houseboats employs about 125 people, including many members of the Togbanua tribe. And if you do any of these tours that we've been doing that are guided by professionals around the island, those are gonna be members of the Togbanua tribe as well. Should you do all of the eco tours on the island here that are guided by one of the members of the tribe? Yes. Do you have to if you're staying in a place like this? No. This is one of the coolest coral reefs I've ever seen and it's literally one dive off of our back patio. That is amazing. This could keep you occupied for hours. I could seriously snorkel around here for hours and hours. It is so breathtaking. I've already mentioned that movie with Leonardo DiCaprio called The Beach. I think this is cooler than that place. The mountains around here just give it a whole different vibe. The water is more beautiful every day. And I'm sure there's a way better coral reef here than on that beach. This is paradise. And I don't know if you could see some of the cloudiness come and go underwater, but apparently that's from the mixture of fresh water and salt water here. It it's almost looks like you're swimming through gasoline, but you're not. <laughs> that makes it sound awful. But it's not just blurriness or cloudiness. There's a certain look to it where you can actually see the water. And it's like wavy, crazy, trippy. And I've never seen our kids less interested in playing on their devices. They're not heaven. We all are. One of the best things about these places when you get out of the salty water is they have outdoor showers. Up here on the roof is an epic view of the coral reef down here. You really get a sense for how sprawling it is, how beautiful it is, but also how you have the drop off from the shallow white sandy area in the back to the deeper area right below the houseboat. Having this as a backyard would be absolutely incredible. Every day, just being able to experience this. Erin said she saw a sea turtle out here earlier, but we didn't get any footage of it, I'm sorry. Hey, hey, as long as we have some kayaks here, might as well put them to good use. All right, there's a little casing up here that Colt wants to go through. I don't think there's a stamp right now with his tide that we're going to make it through, but we'll get up there and see. Not a stamp. Yeah, lower tide maybe. Now that we've burned off some energy, it's time to just get cleaned up, relax, and pretty soon we're gonna have some dinner on the table. So far this experience has been great. There's many rooms here, so if you're ever planning to come here like with a little party, then I would probably recommend this. Oh, that's perfect, thank you. Well, what a gorgeous setting for dinner and a great way to close out this episode. Please keep following us along. We're going on more and more adventures and we still have a lot more of the Philippines to explore. And a huge thank you to Paolo and the entire Pauline houseboats team 
for making this day, I think, the most epic we've been on so far. This is such an incredible place to stay. We're gonna put a link down below in the description so that if you wanna book a trip here, which is very easy to do, you can do it. We can't say enough great things about this place. So look forward to coming back. This is Pauline Houseboat. Let's do that again. <laughs> here comes the rain again. Falling on my head like a new emotion. I don't even know if those are the words. <laughs> uh, falling on my head like...